All right, we're back on this Samsung Dumpster Dive 46-inch LCD TV, and it might look a bit funny because here's the frame. It looks like it's the front, but you can see the circuitry because we've actually taken off the front bezel here um, with all the associated, I'll flip it around, with all the associated uh, front panel uh, stuff on it. It's got the, uh, the lead down here. It's got the speakers over here and here, like the bottom speakers. There's speakers on the back. Uh, of course, they're like the uh, subwoofers on the thing for the uh, low frequency performance. But it's got four speakers here and it's got um, the uh, sensor board in here as well. So that's all capacitive uh, touch sensing under there. So that just came out easily with uh, four screws. Unfortunately, one of the uh, mounts for that actually broke off. So, um, yeah, oops. So I'm not sure if that's indicative of uh, the issue we're having. But what I believe the issue is... I'll link in the previous video if you haven't uh, seen this thing. Uh, we couldn't really fault the power supply. All the uh, measured values on the uh, TCOM, the timing control board here, all looked fine. Voltages over on the main processor board look fine. So it all points towards the panel itself. Now, I've actually, um, well, what happens here, okay, you've got your main processor board, signal comes across this flat flex, yeah, I've played around with these connectors, nothing doing there at all, and then you've got the timing control board, which actually uh, outputs all the timing and video uh, signals for all of the LCD information. Now, because this is a full HD panel, there's a th um, 1920 by 1080, so it's got 1920 columns, so if you actually uh, count the number of conductors in there, between these two cables going to the panel, there's of course not going to be uh, 1920 uh, columns on there for the damn thing, right? Let alone the horizontal stuff. So, um, yeah, so th these actually go to little boards. You might be able to... Here we go. I'll see if I can uh, get the camera over. You might be able to see that little board in there. You can see that board. There's a board which runs all the way along here. And goes all the way right out to either side. So there's two boards that uh, go in different directions like this, and they would have all the column drivers on them that actually uh, go down. So it's most likely that uh, the way this thing is constructed is that this connects up into here, and then you've got this, uh, I don't know, we'll call it like the driver board or something, that is tucked away inside here, and then there'll be multiple flat flexes again with like a hot bar uh, solder attachment, probably direct to the flat flex bonded, flat flex bonded directly onto the uh, PCB itself using a hot bar technique, it's usually called. That's most likely. I don't know, I haven't opened up this one, a particular one before, but there's probably a few of them along there, and then these, and there'll be circuitry to actually demultiplex uh, that stuff into the panel. Or the panel actually uh, could have uh, the circuitry on the flat flex uh, itself. That'd be like a chip on flex technology or something like that. So I think there's most likely to be an issue right up here. Yes, I have actually, uh, you know, fiddled, fiddled around with these and reset them and everything while the uh, TV's going and couldn't see any difference whatsoever. So it's not that. So I think it's further on inside the panel. So what we're going to try and do now is... Uh, somehow <laughs> get access to that so we can actually see and uh, play around with those potentially. And there's the whole front panel. It actually looks rather jazzy on its own. I, I really like it. It's sort of like a shame to put the uh, glass around the thing actually. It looks kind of like, I don't know, industrial. David, too? What do you reckon? Way better. Way better. He thinks it's way better than having the wanky glass around the outside. Yep. 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 Absolutely. All right, so this has screws in here and uh, if we take those out maybe this top this whole top bezel will uh, lift off and then we'll should be able to see the uh, flat flex connections let's give it a go yep. there, yeah there we go we got it oh we're in like Flynn and it's exactly as I said there's a few more than what I thought but I'll show you that in a sec all right here we go exactly as I suspected there's actually um 16 of these uh, flat flexes, yep, they are hot bar attachment, just as I suspected. I'll show you a close up in a second, and they've got the chip on board decoder as well. So a thousand. So if these are all column uh, drivers, then it's a full HD is um, 1920 uh, columns, 1920 pixels across, like this. So um, divide that by 16. That's 120. So there must be a driver chip 
in there embedded on the flex which drives 120 columns like that. So here it is. Here's the flat flex coming over from the T-Con board. You can see that that's hot bar soldered directly down to there. The reason that they, well, it's actually like, yeah, reflow slash hot bar. The reason that they call it hot bar is because uh, during, at the uh, PCB assembly house, they like literally have a bar, a metal bar that comes across and it's hot. And it, you know, they have a jig which comes in and then just presses, you know, down onto there like that, they sort of, you know, have little jigs to align it all up, and then the hot bar just comes down and boop, and then just solders everything in one operation. So they've done that, and they're, uh, for the, um, that's for the T-Con connection, and then these all split out to these uh, 16 different flat flexes here. Once again, hot, hot bar attachment, don't trust that any further than I can throw it. This one looks solid. Look, you can see the solder fillets in there. Kind of, I might get the macro lens out in a second, but these ones, these ones are definitely hot bar attached and these don't look as solid as these ones down here, but, and much higher density, of course. So, you know, there could be something wrong in here or I can show you, well, yeah, because it's on the top, I can show you the underside of the chip up here, up there. That's a chip, actually driver chip embedded onto the flat flex. So there we go. That's a closer up shot of that and you can, really see the difference in the pin pitches on those two so the one the bottom one's the one coming from the T-Con board and I've got high confidence in that as I said like I've wiggled that around and everything but yeah as far as the column issues we're seeing um, there could be a tab connection issue along here or it could be the uh, chip on top and the bonding and all that sort of jazz. You have to excuse the video here I've got to look through this mylar flat flex or whatever it is and you can actually see the connections you can actually see some test pads in there that they've got so this is the underside and that chip is actually a physical like a large chip like that it's actually physical the die is physically long and uh, thin like that so that that's just the way it's organized logistically to get all the traces out the other side so these so you'd have so you've got a relatively small number of traces coming in here okay like serial input or whatever it is and then you then you'd have like the 120 traces coming out the other side which you can't see at this uh, angle so that's why they've actually manufactured the die like that now the interesting thing about all this is you're probably wondering where are the horizontal drivers well the, the I'm I think this is the vertical driver chip on here and the horizontal might actually be coming perhaps directly from the T-Con you can actually maybe if you look closely you can actually see some traces then bypassing the chip and going out into here and then we've got another connection there you can see that on the they're all little traces running through there. I showed this up in minute detail in previous videos, but yeah, there's got to be some traces snaking around the side uh, of this whole thing for the um, horizontal, uh, uh, the horizontal uh, lines as well, because you can't just have column drivers. You've got to have intersecting um, horizontal ones as well. Now you can actually, this is the corner of the uh, glass LCD. You can see some traces snaking their way around here. here you can probably see like the individual pixels in there now if we uh maybe if we yeah yeah you should be able to see that there we go all the individual pixels hard to um tell on my lcd uh screen here yeah there we go and you can see these traces actually snaking around the side like this and going all the way down to the horizontal uh down here so I'm not sure if there's uh, any chip on glass uh, drivers under here for the horizontal. So I'm not actually sure, sure of the exact mechanism they're using there to get all of the uh, 1080 uh, traces that they need to. They might be doing half on one side, half on the other maybe. I'm not sure of the mechanism. Can't really get the entire glass panel out to take a look. Now if we actually zoom in on the side here, you can actually look. Look at that, you can almost see, you see something in there, something very strange and staggered through, it's almost like there's wires jumping over, it almost looks like they're jumping over like that and making connections. So yeah, I'd love to see more detail, but it's actually 
really difficult to manipulate this thing under the uh, microscope. And, you know, at, an, at this angle, you might actually even be able... It, it might come out better, but uh, that is... That is fascinating. Look at that. It's a staggered arrangement of three. And somehow they're getting all of the horizontal drive out of that. All right, here we go. We've actually powered the thing up without its front panel bezel, so it doesn't have like the front panel power capacitive touch switch, doesn't have the front, you know, all the touch switchy stuff. So it obviously didn't need that to uh, power up. Now you can see the clear vertical stripes here. So now it's time to poke it. So let's give it a burl. Let's uh, touch our our flat flex up there. Put some pressure on that hot bar. Oh, nothing. Nothing. Okay, let's go to these ones over here. I'm starting to think it may not be the... I'm starting to think it may not be these either. I would have expected... Could, yeah, if you push these down, maybe. Yeah, no. But, I've, it, but it's but common it, yeah, between both bought, boards. I've yeah, yeah. These are separate boards. Yep. They are two separate boards. And those are two separate ribbons. Yep. So you'd need... It looks like... Two separate failures. Okay. We might be wrong. It may not be these connections. So they, they're, they're pretty solid. They're pretty solid. I'd expect to see something, something change in there. But uh, not a sausage. No, that is rock solid. So is it? Is it the T-Con... Is there something wrong with the T-Con board? Because it doesn't look like there's anything wrong with these flat flexes. As you saw in the previous video, we actually uh, got out the thermal spray, the uh, freezer spray, and we uh, and we froze those big uh, ASIC chips on there, and it didn't do anything. So if there was any sort of uh, you know dry joint BGA uh, issue, then that it doesn't always show up with the uh, freezer spray, but you know odds are that it. Uh, should have shown something and it didn't so I don't know there you go so much for the uh, flat flex uh, theory hmm bummer love the relays clicking yeah I don't think I trust a product that doesn't have relays <laughs> just instills confidence in you when you power something and relays go click 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 <laughs> what are they using them for I uh, my input mains. See that? So it, yeah, Nothing. see, it's not there. Nothing Look, and all. then it started. Then there's some a couple of little red dots there. Oh, uh, and then then it started. There it is. It's coming in. Is there a video like filter? Yeah. Is there something on like? Yeah, no, because this doesn't it's pass not, through any analog paths. It's it's, 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 oh, it's shit, entirely, yeah. it's entirely digital. And this and it remains regardless of where the. Of what uh, you know, we do the test signal, and it's still there as well. Yeah, okay. So like look, strange. yeah, that's so that that is way very worse. very strange. It gets way worse. It does get worse with time. So that's not indicative of a flat flex issue. So there you go. We'll have to choose a different path. Choose your own adventure. Right, we've got a theory because those horizontal lines went. They were common all the way through, and we've got two separate boards like this, which effectively split it. Um, so it seems to be happening further back in the chain somewhere. So what we've done is we've disconnected this side of the panel, and we'll see what happens. Apply power. Physically disconnected this side. So here we go. Can you, yeah, I can see it. Yeah, there we go. So we're still getting the lines. We're getting half those lines. Yep. There we go. But all the horizontal lines are still there and the vertical lines are all still there. So we'll do the other one. So it's, yep. We'll just uh, swap that over. And of course, I think we'll see exactly the same thing, but this half will work. So that, in, that will indicate, yeah, you can see it coming. That, look, you see how it fades in, though? It seems worse. That greeniness. Yeah, that's... Oh, it does kind of seem worse. And also we noticed before that a couple of these little pixels up the top here for this red bar, they were, like, start, like, would, like, vanish off and on. So... That's worse. It was weird. 
It's worse. We're not getting there. And we're not, we're, we're not getting the menu signal, right? Uh, I don't know. Where's the, there should be half a menu there. We're not getting a menu. All right, so we've got it back. Yes, bare feet. And yeah, Dave wears socks. He's a complete weirdo. I, David, sorry, doesn't like being called Dave. No, here it comes, here it comes. Wait for it, folks, wait for it. Fading in, fading in. That is not indicative of a uh, panel fault. That is not indicative at all, I don't think. And look at that. The bars are back. Yep, yep. It's so. different. It was, yeah, it was more solid before. And we got no menu. Why weren't we getting a menu? Um. We're plugging this side. So I'm not sure of the exact, you know, mechanism between horizontal drive, maybe there was no, yeah, I think what was happening, maybe that side is controlling more, uh, like the, the, the horizontal, or more of the horizontal, or something like that, I don't know, I haven't thought about the architecture of the driving mechanism behind it yet, but, I, I've got high confidence in the panel, I, I, I'm not suspecting any of these uh, flat flexes at all, or the um, chip on flex drivers or the hot bar attachments. I'm not suspecting those because we've fiddled and diddled with them and nothing. So we're sitting here thinking, I think we both agree it's got to be the TCOM board because if it's the processor board, um, yeah, I, like you wouldn't be getting the menus. They're probably in serial. there will probably be like eight. I, I reckon there's like, a, you know, a bunch, like eight or 16 yeah. or something differential pairs over that sexy ribbon cable that was yeah. shown in the back that connects the processor board to the TCOM board. And if there was a serial problem, you'd expect a really widespread Bro chaos. Car carnage, right? There'd yeah. be carnage. You wouldn't get the menu with, you know, doing all its funkiness. Although, if you remember in the first video, which David too has not seen, um, the we were getting a ghosting, a weird ghosting on the menus. So that's gone, and that's gone. I only saw that once. So, but I did capture it on film. Hmm. Celluloid. You know, we shoot this in like seventy millimeter, and we're using the eight track sound system. You know, so yep. yeah. This, this camera takes up half yep. the lab. It's crazy. Yeah. So, <laughs> so if you want the original source footage for the videos, just send me a self addressed uh, stamped envelope, and I'll send you the original eight track tapes and tapes and. Uh, <laughs> Do that again. Ghosting's back. Ghosting's... I... <laughs> what did you do? I, I don't know. I da was David was tapping something. I was tapping... Da David was tapping something. I can't remember. I was like tapping the ground or something. I was tapping something. What were you doing? <laughs> Any changes? No, no. It was it was like plastic tapping. Like that original one. Like dirt, dirt, dirt. That first tap you did. I, I can't remember. I don't remember. <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't taking it seriously. Just Dave was zoned out. out, tapping the back of the TV. <laughs> <laughs> he found whatever the hell it was. Oh, we do know that, I don't know if you can see me. I'm boo. Hello. Um, we do know that the, yeah, the main ASIC on the processor board is driving a whole bunch of differential pairs, as you'd expect, over that main cable, that black cable we saw inside, over to the TCON board. Um, it's being driven directly. That sounds like the tapping that you were doing. Yeah, okay. That well, sounds the same. Okay. Well, that's the main ASIC on the processor board. Although I was, shortly before that, spraying some of the memory, some of the um, ASIC memory that's surrounding it. it. So Yeah, it only takes one bit to one get every bit second. One bit to get... Every issues. second, yeah, every second row low or, or some row missing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, I don't know. Is our money now on the processor board? You were definitely tapping the processor board, right? I was, yeah. I haven't been tapping the TCON. Well, we've got to choose something, either the TCON board or the processor board. And, of course, we're going to choose wrong. Murphy will ensure that happens. So, we're going to... Um, like, usually, like, TCON boards are more popular uh, failure modes. In fact, by, by far the most popular. But we do suspect something on the processor board because we were tapping around here and we made a difference and we were freezing around here, made a difference. So we don't like the look of the... So we think it's either the ASIC 
or it's the memory. And little pain in the ass BGA memory chips in there. Uh, they're actually easy to reflow. We don't have to take the board out or anything like that because um, they're a low uh, thermal mass, everything else. You know, we don't need a preheater underneath or whatever. Or we'll just preheat on the top a little bit. Then we'll go in for the kill doing those. And um, yeah, so that's really quick and simple just to rule out those memory chips there. So we'll just give it a go. Um, you know, I don't like our chances, but... Uh, are you feeling lucky, punk? No. <laughs> go for it. Plug it in. Is that a camera between your legs, or are you just pleased to see me? All right. We've um. What we've done is we've uh, reflowed, reheated the um, the D rams, the uh, surrounding, the. Is our, yep, our friend the red, yep, no, it's exactly the same. All right, so we reflowed those uh, memory chips and nothing. Wah, thanks for playing. And the other thing we're perplexed about is why it only seems to be, well, vertical issues here only seem to be on things which line up with ASCII characters. You see we've got our characters here and the vertical lines, like are each... Um, align with each ASCII character. The PC over here is like orange, but we're getting like red, or it's, what's, what is it, yellow, um, but we're getting the red stripes lining up with the ASCII characters, and this one's interesting. It lines up with our um, uh, colon there, but we don't have, um, oh no, no, there is a faint one. Extremely faint. Yeah, ones, there yeah. is a faint one trailing the outer pixels of those two characters so uh, maybe it's like it's almost as if like the density of the character is causing a uh, you know a vertical stripe issue it's just bizarre see but we don't get anything on these vertical lines here which is solid bars which, uh, yeah yeah big solid bars it's so it's like graphical it only happens on the text insertion side of things almost mm. like you know and plus we've still got the issue with the horizontal lines right but that may be may or may not be related there could be two separate faults who knows but one of them seems to be definitely related to ascii characters it's weird you can see we've got a different menu up now we've put the bezel back on so that we can access the menu and see it follows the uh it follows the text and menus and things like that. So it's really, it's really rather bizarre. And it stays there for a bit. And then we can eventually get it to do other stuff. It's just, uh, yeah, there's something sticking to all the menus. Something like that anyway. All right, I'm starting to strongly suspect this uh, T-Con board now. I think it might be a red herring with the uh, tapping on the processor board making it go completely away, although we did see it go completely away. So anyway, um, the TCON board uh, could be a bad uh, BGA joint under either the memory or these uh, two ASICs here. It's, you know, unlikely to be uh, these uh, flat packs and things like that. These BGAs are classic uh, culprits for that. I've already um, actually reflowed the two memory uh, chips here and it didn't do anything. So the next step is to get medieval on its ass and uh, Whack it in the reflow oven. I'll put it through a standard uh, temperature profile. I can't remember What uh, temperature profile I've got set up for this uh, beta layout um, One as you've seen in a um, in a previous video, but yeah, it's like a pretty stock standard uh, temperature profile So it should work the business for this so I'll just whack that in there and it'll take uh, you know five minutes or something Hopefully uh, heat everything up reflow all the joints and if there's any problem in the joints at all um, Hopefully it would fix it fingers crossed, but I don't know. I don't think the chances are too high. I'm not sure what the actual failure modes are with this particular TCON board in particular anyway, but yeah, I mean TCON board, classic culprit in this um, scenario for the LCD, but yeah, I've like, you know, I've tried the flat flex ribbon, I've been, I've gone to town on this uh, flat flex and I can't find any issues barring going in there and actually measuring the receipt, getting differential probe and measuring the uh, receiver 
uh, points and everything to make sure everything's okay. Eh, easier just to reflow the thing. So we'll give that a bill. And yes, this is actually a double-sided uh, load. So, you know, ideally you want uh, glue on the uh, second side components. Can't actually see any glue on these puppies. But uh, anyway, we'll uh, give it a go. Um, it, most likely there is. So they might have tiny little uh, dabs of glue on them, hopefully. Anyway, the uh, surface tension of the solder should keep uh, the components there on the bottom. They're only very uh, low mass components. So, yeah. Fingers crossed, yet again. And if you haven't seen my little uh, beta layout reflow uh, controller before, it is quite nice. So you can buy it from beta layout. And it's got a uh, learn mode uh, as well where you can actually, uh, you know, set up the thermal profile for your particular uh, oven, which is excellent. And I just whack the, uh, so I've already like uh, pre-programmed this for a solder uh, profile for this oven. So at the moment it's in, in uh, preheat mode, then it'll go into soak. Then this is where the reflow happens. It gives like a little uh, peak to the uh, temperature profile. Then it dwells for a while and um, it's all finished. So, well, it'll take a while. There we go, it just finished its uh, reflow process and a little bit more left. As you can see, it's up nearing up around 230 degrees C in there, give or take. And the only real problem with these toaster ovens is that they don't cool down very quick. So the way you fix that, we're finished now and uh, we can just, woo, open the door. All right, here we go. We've reflowed that Tcon board. So if there were any bad solder joints on there, hopefully, you know, it might have done something, reflowed them, as the name suggests. So let's give it a bell. I don't think we'll get that lucky. Um, but you never know. Never know. No, no, no. I can still see some horizontal stuff happening. No. I think we'll see our red stripes come back. Yep, 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 they're gonna start. No, there you go, reflowing the teak on board. Didn't do a thing. Well, the good news is, didn't damage it. Hmm. I just wanted to point this out. Look at the beautiful length matching on these uh, LVDS differential pair traces here. Check this out. You'll see, because of the shape of the thing, okay, the shape of the thing, the um, the pair on the inside here is going to be a little bit shorter than the pair on the outside. The pair on the inside here will need a lot more wiggles in it to actually get a longer length to match the outer one. So if we actually zoom right in here, you can see that these outer ones, see they have little wiggles in there to match the length and the outer ones actually stop there and there and it gets progressively shorter they stop at different lengths until so this pair in here is the exact same length as this pair out here so that the timing between all the data is exactly the same very nice well there you go i think i've had about enough again for today I haven't spent all day on it you know spent like half an hour on the damn thing but anyway um yeah uh, i don't know if anyone else has got any good ideas about this uh, let us know we might have to start cracking out the scope or something like that Jeez, that's a bit rough, but yeah, reflowed that board. Could reflow the processor board uh, as well. I don't want to do that uh, right now. So anyway, I'll just leave that video here. I don't know. That was just like half an hour of us just bumming around with this Monda uh, TV. Sorry. Anyway, if you liked it, give it a big thumbs up and all that sort of stuff. Catch you next time.